front view camera. Check it out. That is pretty cool. And blind spot camera warning. Hey everyone, so guess what we got? Brand new screen. Check it out from TMA. This is their latest 6.86 inch. This one is pretty exciting for a few reasons that I will go over with you. But first off, take a look. This is just one of the three different UIs. It's pretty cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a complete unboxing, explain all the cabling and a little bit of an intro for the installation. Then I'm gonna do a couple comparisons. I had a 5.16 inch mini screen in there, which was kind of the latest mini screen. I'm gonna do a comparison with that one. I also am going to be doing another comparison based on this front view, rear view mirror. Why? Because this one has front view. Check it out. That's a front view camera. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Then I'm gonna do a full install, running all the cables, especially the one for the front camera. I'll walk through the three different UIs, all the menu settings. I'll show you what's good. I'll show you what's not so good. Then we'll do some driving around. I'll tell you everything that I know. The install's not that bad, but watch the full video. That way you're gonna know what to do ahead of time and there's not gonna be any surprises. Also, if you see the install and it looks like too much for you, TMA has a lot of different partnerships across the nation. You should be able to find an installer somewhere. Check TMA out. They have all kinds of Tesla items and also for Mercedes, Audi, BMW. And don't forget your discount code, Tesla Mark. Save at least 10%. Works almost everywhere. Give it a try. So in my experience so far, TMA has been pretty responsive. And this display is still fairly new. If you see anything you like, don't like, something you want changed, some suggestions, put them down below. I'll shoot them over the TMA. By the way, if you see anything in my video on the car that's not part of this video, check out my channel. I most likely have a video on something that you've seen. At the end of the video, I'm gonna do a final review, the good and the bad. There's a lot in this video, so I chaptered out everything down below. All right, let's see what we got in the box. Yeah, here it is. The new display, 5.86 for Model 3 and Model Y. Oh my God, the struggle is real. All right. And, oh man, oh man. Guess what this is? Front facing camera front facing camera nice all right and the display Ooh, looking good looking good these scratches are in the protective coating here which i'm going to leave on until it's installed all right as usual we've got some nice factory type finish here nice OEM look all right there's a little rubber door here with all right that's a USB-C and not sure what this button is for if that, that little hole who knows maybe a reset or something but I kind of see light through it as if it goes all the way through I don't know I don't know we'll find out Okay, little speaker um, underneath. Hey, check it out. Steel reinforced. All right, this is pretty standard for our displays. Uh, this just replaces what we've got there on the steering column, so that's nice. Let's see what else we've got in the box. All right, all the cabling. Okay, this also looks pretty standard. Um, okay, this is going to be for the display. Yeah, that's the same size. That's for the display. And, uh, all right, this is going to be for the camera. Uh, this is power plug and, and all the other data elements. Okay, okay. And then, this is the wiring that is going to go to the computer here. All right, so this is for the CAN bus. I'll go through more of this later, but this is for, I believe, uh, sometime around 2021, they changed to uh, a, a CAN bus style with the Ryzen processor. This connector, I'll, I'll show you where this goes, and this uh, wire, this is for the Intel Atom, which is what I have in my 2018, so we'll go through that. And then this is for the AMD, 
Ryzen. And uh, I'll also show some footage of that, although it won't be my footage because I don't have that. I've got, again, 2018, I've got the uh, Intel Atom. All right, and then this is going to run up to the display here and uh, plug into this. All right. Sweet. Let's get this installed. So check this out for comparison. This is the last screen that I had on the car. The Hanshow 5.16 inch screen, I believe it's called. And here is the new one, the 6.86. And if you take a look at this, I think these are lined up about right. Um, you can see the, the, the six inch screen is a little bit taller and obviously it's, it's wider. I mean, you know, just put them upside down like this just so you can get a good view. Um, I don't know what that is. That's an extra, it's got to be at least a three quarter inch on each side. So the screen is almost seven and a half inches across, seven and seven and seven sixteenths across by about two and seven eighths inches tall because I got everything out here. Five and three sixteenths and uh, uh, that's about two and five eighths inches tall because that's just the screen. You know, when you when you kind of line them up, I think this one sits a little bit taller in the in the housing here also. So even if they are the same size, which they're not, this one is a little taller anyway when we line up the screens. Um, I think it sits a little taller than that. So if you are uh, really concerned about your airflow and uh, you know you want the airflow right over the, the steering column, yeah, of course this is gonna block some airflow. I mean, it, you, it, it, it has to, okay? It, it, you've got something here, it's gonna block some airflow. Uh, is that a big deal for you? Well, it, that all depends. Uh, you can just raise the vents a little higher and it'll, it'll blow right over. So, uh, I know that's a big concern for some people, so uh, just keep that in mind. All right, using one of the pry tools. Actually, I'm not even sure you need a pry tool for this, but it's better if you use it. But we got to get both of these off. Uh, there's one on the other side, too. Okay, now this should just come straight up. That is out and can make note of all of these clips in there because we are going to have to make sure they all clip right back in. Next we got to get this guy off. This is where the whole replacement screen goes. Okay, so I adjusted the steering wheel all the way out, which it pretty much already was, and we're gonna pull these little clips off. And another reason why you, you want some kind of a pry tool, although you could use a screwdriver here. part. Now we got to lift this guy up. More clips. Okay, it's got to go out a little bit that way and up in order to get this piece out. This, these sides just kind of come off. That's no big deal. Uh, that comes out of there. And these look like they, they just need a little bit of a pinch. Oh, that one's that way. That one you pinch. There we go. We'll pinch it a little bit harder. Right, that one aside and um, sorry there's little tabs here on the side too that kind of have to wrap around I'll show you here in a second 
but first just kind of line those in. Push those in. Uh, this one already wrapped around. This one here you got to kind of bend so you can see and actually I, I, I broke this one a long time ago. Try not to break things. However, it, it still stays down, no problem. So anyway, this is the factory piece. Let's get this on the car. Okay, so let's move the steering wheel all the way out so that we know that we've got a full extension and that uh, if we do move the steering wheel around after mounting this, the wires aren't gonna get, uh, the wires aren't gonna run out of room basically. Okay, it's all the way out. Now we take this, plug the cable into it. It only goes in one way. All right. Come out this way. All right, so this has to go in here first. Hold the cable out. So don't lose that. And then you've got to make sure that this ridge goes underneath the steering wheel. And then you have to watch all the way around, all these little kind of clip tab things can't be too far in and can't be too far out. You don't want them coming outside here and you don't want them going outside of, you'll see where they go into in the steering wheel. Obviously check both sides before you start pushing this thing down. So we have to... It's a, again, it's it's a little bit tricky and you really have to kind of crunch this thing together because it has to go down and kind of in again because of this ridge. This side, this side is all lined up and it's kind of ready to go down. This side is not. This side's kind of holding back a little bit. I'll hold that with my knee. There we go. I kind of held this up with my knee, pop this in, and then this side, pop that side in, and then we should be able to get both of these sides down. You hear a lot of crunching, popping, and uh, it sounds a little bit like things are breaking. I have yet to break anything in here. Those clips are pretty flexible, hardy. Um, I don't know what to call it, but I've taken this thing off. I don't know how many times now, probably at least on and off 10 times with different screens in that. So just make sure everything's aligned before you start pushing it down. Cause if it's not aligned, you probably will break some clips. This has to make sure this is sticking out and then put these back in, put these push pins back in. Now we are going to start wiring this up and I'll show you where to run this in general or where I'm going to run it. All right, like I said, if you have a 2021 or later, you are in luck because you get to tie into the CAN bus, which is this plug here. It is located underneath this panel. So once you remove this, which you have to remove either way, no matter which method you're using, you will see uh, if, if you have these plugs or not. Uh, and I will show them here shortly. If you have them, consider yourself lucky. So this next section is for you, 2021 and later. If you have an earlier model car and you don't have this CAN bus, then skip ahead. I'll chapter everything out. You can use the other method where you're going to tap into the processor with one of these.
Okay, so this is the most challenging part. You have to get up under here. This is the computer that we need to tap into. There is a middle connector here that's gray. That's the one we need to get to. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, now the idea in plugging this into the computer is to create a pass-through. So in other words, I'm going to unplug the computer. This is going to plug into the computer. And then the plug that we take out is going to plug into here. So really the computer is still plugged in, only this is going to tap off of that and go to our new screen. All right, it's pretty simple. That plug up there is just like this. So the idea is that we have to push this centerpiece in and pull out at the same time. You don't need to, to power your car down ahead of time. Uh, you can safely unplug that without powering the car down first. Once you pull it out, obviously the screen and everything um, powers down. And once you plug everything back in, in a few minutes everything will, you know, your screen and everything will come back to life. So there's really no, no concern about that. Um, people do this kind of thing all the time. It was surprisingly not that bad to unplug the computer. I was basically able to get my one hand up there and uh, push down and hold it pretty much just like this and uh, pull it out. Here from the top we see the factory connector is now plugged into the hand show screen connector with the pass through here and now the pass through end here has to be plugged into the Tesla computer. Now you could do this the other way around. You could plug this end into the computer first and then plug the factory computer connector into the hand show pass through which is the way I ended up doing it. Either way, it's tight and you kind of have to pre-bend the wires and connectors to, as I said in the other part here, to just kind of get things lined up ahead of time. And then honestly, just kind of relax. If you can't get this thing in, take a break, come back to it in a few minutes. It's once you're done, it's, it's, you realize it really wasn't all that bad. Okay, got it plugged in. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. The last two connectors just make sure you got everything bent and twisted so that you've got it lined up properly. I tried for a couple minutes to connect them and they were not they were not aligned. <laughs> I had it the opposite way. Uh, I you know the the connector only goes in one way and I had it the other way. So you know pretty quickly that you plugged it in just make sure when you get the connectors plugged in that you hear the little click and it is all the way connected. And uh, you know pretty quickly because all of a sudden you hear some humming and things. You, you hear the car power up and after, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, you'll hear the relay, the main relay click, and then your screen will turn back on. Um, when all that stuff comes up, and it, as long as everything's plugged in, you're, you're good to go. All right, about to install the camera here, uh, run the cable from the dash to the front of the car. Uh, what makes the install... Uh, more difficult really is that you have to start from the front of the car and then work your way back because you can't fit the camera through any little holes or anything so you gotta start from this end and go all the way from the very front of the car to the way back so what what this kit really needs is a separate cable and a plug so if this were like a plug it would be perfect because then you can run you know let's say this was a plug and you know looked like this only male female here then you could run this cable and then you know deal with the camera here at the end and go whichever way you wanted but with this you can't you again you got to start all the way from the front so um yeah that that's a bit of a pain um but you know it's not horrific we can do it all right so this is the front of my car uh if you haven't seen my other video, I already have a front-mounted camera, but this is for my rear-view mirror with, uh, it's supposed to be a rear-view camera. I put it in the front. If you're curious, you could check out that video. However, now with this screen, I can put this back where it's meant for, even though this is a pretty slick solution. All right, anyway, ignore that, because 
what we're going to do now is start mounting this. All right, so like I said before, we have to start here uh, at the very front of the car because we can't fit this really through everywhere where we need to go. So we need to start with this end and start fishing it through. I am going to basically follow where I mounted this one through. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm mocking up the camera right now. In other words, I've got the wire just literally run outside the car to the front of the car. Here's what it looks like. Uh, with it mounted in the same spot, if you saw my other video with the rear view mirror front mounted camera, this is the view. I just wanted to do a quick comparison of what this looks like. Be, in case anybody else has, uh, you know, watched my video and, and did what I did. Uh, well, the cool thing about this is with the buttons back here, you can do this, click them, and move the camera. You're not moving the camera. You're just moving the view of the camera up and down. Uh, you can see there's the, uh, you know, front lip of the car. And because the camera is up higher, you get a better downward view to see if you're going to bump into anything. If you mount the camera to the lip, you're getting, uh, you know, a front view and like, for example, you know, you're looking at the edge of my fingertips, you look at the, at, the, uh, at the mirror, you know, you can't really judge how far anything is. You get a view like this, though, you could see how far you are. So I'm probably going to mount the camera up where I have this camera mounted. So anyway, but back to this, uh, the issue with the camera, uh, yeah, with the camera that came with this kit is that it's a rear view camera and it's out of phase. In other words, this light is actually on this side of the car over here but because this is a rear view camera you know it belongs pointing that way uh, and if you're then looking at it and looking at the back of your car through this everything is right it's correct it's 180 degrees off just to do that so that's the issue with that camera this is the view you're basically going to get though and you can't change it unless you get out there and move that camera physically in other words there's there's no there's no buttons there's no switches you can't choose anything to change that view up and down or left and right you have to physically move the camera anyway for now i'm going to mount this the correct way use it the correct way and then uh, decide if i'm going to keep using this uh, maybe move this camera for this to the back of the car and use this the way it's supposed to be or uh, put another camera on it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyway, this is what this looks like. Uh, the other thing here is uh, this view is really wider. You know, if you see the view here, it's not nearly as wide um, up, down or left, right. You know, it doesn't have as big of a fisheye. Uh, anyway, uh, for my viewers, uh, that's the difference. All right, so what I did was run a wire. Um, it's got to be a pretty stiff wire, actually. This is a, like a single core wire, if you've got anything like that. Just laying around, otherwise uh, like coat hanger or something. And it's basically this, this rubber flap here. And um, I kind of moved it over a little bit down here and just pushed it through and let me show you where it came through on the other side you know you need a you need a pretty stiff wire to be able to poke it through there but then it's so stiff it's hard to bend and get through this way so i don't know keep all that in mind when you're when you're running this uh so then what i'm going to do is tape these two together and then uh Pull the wire through and uh, you know start start fishing this wire all the way through the car i'll show you where i go with that and uh, get it back up to the screen okay so the camera mount uh, you could do it two different ways you could simply mount it down here like this and um, get a straight shot you know to the front of your car however i think the most important reason for having a front mounted camera is so that you don't run your the run the front of the car into some kind of a curb or whatever and when you have it this close to the bottom whatever part of your car whatever edge you're going to have a camera on it's hard to judge distance you really uh, you know the most ideal thing really is to have it mounted more like this so that you can actually see the distance in there right so 
what I'm doing is mounting it up here um, I, you know again I've probably said this a number of times already in the video uh, this is for my other rear view mirror uh, front mounted camera this is normally a rear mounted camera I put it in the front for this exact issue in this car right now I am probably because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do and, and when I'm going to do it I'm leaving this camera in here and I'm just going to kinda mock this up and literally just kinda tape it in place to do this video right now and then decide what to do later but I'm going to mount it up here upside down and point it down um, you know I'll, I'll check the best angle inside the car but it's going to be somewhat like this and they give you double-sided tape just make sure you clean this surface clean this surface down here I recommend putting it back here where it's uh, kind of a little black area and leave some room here uh, with the cable to be able to pull this out and mount it up and, and deal with this now you have to keep track of this there's a little arrow on the back of the camera that tells you which end is up because if you mount the camera the wrong way your image is going to be upside down so when I mount it this way arrows pointing up right if you mount it this way it would be upside down the arrows pointing down so you want to make sure that that arrow is pointing up to get this cable uh, you see where this mounts right here to the bracket and the cable comes on that side of, of this bracket and then the way I'm mounting it it has to come this way uh, that means I had to take this off in order to get the cable through there so just give yourself enough room here with the cable uh, so again mine is going to look like somewhat like this uh, they also give you some screws you could use to to mount this however there's not a lot of room in here to actually get a screwdriver in so your best and your easiest bet is going to be to use this tape um, and I think I said clean this with alcohol clean this really well with alcohol put the double-sided tape on um, stick it on there find your best view and you're good to go okay that's it for the camera so underneath the dashboard here you can see where this giant grommet is now this is a 2018 they all have some kind of grommet though somewhere under here that looks like this and this is where you want to run wires through now these orange ones are tesla wires this other black one here is one that i ran for my um, other camera so i'm going to run another one right above that and the way to do that is to find something uh, like this really sharp and pierce a hole um, I'm going to pierce a hole right through here. I kind of need to get the camera and everything out of the way, but I'm going to pierce a hole through there. Then uh, what I'm going to do is run like this wire through there. Uh, this wire is pretty stiff. Again, you've you got to use something like a, a real stiff wire coat hanger, something like that, and poke that through. And it's got to be long enough, and I'll show you where that's going to go under the, um, under the frunk in the firewall and you're going to be able to grab that and this is your fishing line and you're going to pull it through you're going to tie the other end of the connector the camera connector to this and then you're going to pull it back through all right sound easy yeah it is so there it is poke the hole ran the push the wire through uh, i may have to push it through a little bit more and uh, i'll show you where it is on the other side we're just going to pull it keep pulling it through a little bit more all right obviously i've got the the frunk off and um, took this front panel off also that's here and if we look behind here why is this hard to line up okay so I think you can see back there um, where it comes through on the grommet you can see the orange wires and then the red one and I'm just gonna grab the red one pull that up here and then tie the um, tie the camera connector to it and then pull it back through all right so here it is in the car pulled it through uh, what I did if you can see I didn't layer the wire on top of the other wire like like this I kind of put it uh, tip to tip well I did put it tip to tip and uh, taped it up that way because uh, it may have been too thick to get through the grommet but yeah this this pulled through pretty easily so uh, we are going to finish running this and uh, we're going to run it up 
uh, through there just basically following the same spot as the uh, the other camera wire it's going to come up here side of the dash top of the dash all the way through all right so under the hood here uh, remember I've got two different cameras in the front so this one here is the um, the one that we're talking about and I just ran this wire pretty much uh, next to the other one except uh, in, in zip tied it along the way except um, I should have run it down there like I did the other one forgot and ran it up here though instead here and then in there and then uh, as I showed before it goes through the firewall there but just uh, zip tie it to, to other wires it's gonna be fine I mean uh, look if you don't think these wires are fine look at this this is this is factory Tesla stuff look at those open bare wires that's like crazy to me I just I'm kind of like it's really bugging me I, I kind of want to cover them up somehow all right anyway that's how it's run in the front All right, I'll show you where I ran these wires in a minute, but for now, I made the connections back here, um, camera and uh, power data, but uh, we can't leave these big connectors out. You don't want to leave a lot of wires out, you don't want to leave a lot of big connectors out for sure, because you, you could end up interfering with the dash and not being able to put it all the way down. So, there is room in here to tuck things under, and what you're going to want to do, a couple things you're going to want to do. First off, you're going to need to tape these down. You don't want these interfering with the clips. Uh, you want to tape them so, again, on this side, it's not going to be interfering with the clip over here. Um, I'm going to put a, another piece of tape right here just to uh, maybe actually right, right here just to kind of hold it down. Make sure, again, I, I don't want it falling in, uh, in, in that area. And... I tuck these down on the side and this one will remain right around here but uh, let me show you though what you want to do just to make sure you're not in the way because when you start moving the steering wheel in and out you'll see you run out of room in here I don't think these would create any kind of real issue in terms of things uh, jamming up in there but uh, you probably want to go through this exercise after you after you make the connections and after you kind of drop them in here just to make sure that you are clear okay so things should end up right around like this then uh, you know move the steering wheel all the way up you'll see you still got clearance here hopefully you know again you don't want to jam things up bring it down all the way uh, I think it's all the way it's all the way out right now but Bring it all the way in, you see it, it tightens up. And don't get your finger caught on it. You'll see it really tightens up in there. I'm probably gonna tape it in here like this. So I should have enough room. Just make sure you get it all tucked in the way you need it. Clip both of these in here. And then, like I said, play with the steering wheel a little bit, move it in and out. Just make sure, you're, again, you're not gonna get jammed up anywhere. You're not gonna crush anything, uh, damage these connections. All right, so I've got this clip back in, and then you can see where I ran the wires. Again, avoiding all of these clips. And you can see where I ran it down there. All right, the two wires together. Uh, something I want to note, you see here, be careful uh, after you take the dash out, Look for all your clips. Make sure they're intact and proper. Like, this one looks like it's missing. Well, guess what? It's right there. Okay? This one here, it was all bent up uh, and, and mangled a little. Not mangled, but it was all bent up. 
and what happens uh, I, don't be overly concerned especially if you're just doing this the first time one time um, I've had this dash in and out I don't know how many times at least 10 different times now with testing different screens and uh, you know that's when you start running into some problems uh, with clips and so forth so uh, just check them all make sure that you didn't lose any and none of them are uh, out of place so that when you put the dash back in um, it goes back in properly let's now get this dash back on don't want to scratch anything up but you can see where we've got all of our alignment tabs and tabs that need to pop and click in so trying to kind of line all this up to begin with Signs down. Let's pop these guys back in. So in park, the display really doesn't do anything. The car just kind of sits there after the intro video. It'll show you if any of the doors, front, trunk, are open. But, you know, that's about it. Nothing exciting to see there. You can pick the color of the car. I'll show you that in a minute. When you are in park or drive, you can get into the menu. Okay, so for me, the menu is a little bit hard to get used to the controls. Then when you scroll down, you can see that you're selecting the uh, the different menu items and it's a lot of these are either left or right and then to make your selection so if I want to select um, well let me start off here if I want to select this right arrow for example I have to click this right and you see it starts changing the different languages and then I scroll up and I'm over here and I click right you know the problem is you see these for me anyway I see these left and right arrows and I want to click left and right on the scroll wheel but that's not right uh, now also I'm clicking right here but it's not going anywhere it would be nice if these menus could scroll back around uh, especially because there are a ton of different languages in there which is uh, you know pretty cool uh, so uh, let's go through these menu items however so, uh, you know, time zone switch, uh, get your time zones correct. Temperature, Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius. Uh, this one, this one actually scrolls around. Okay, so that's, that's interesting. So some of these settings will scroll, the others will not. Time, you know, you've got your 12 or 24 hours. Speed limit. So the speed limit sign is, um, you know, here when you're driving, you get the little speed limit right that's what this will show on the display uh, that same speed limit sign either on or off uh, pressure you've got your bar or PSI I like PSI you can pick your car color gray red blue black uh, you know nothing unique I'm gonna stick with my white all right so day and night from what I understand, and um, I haven't tested this yet because you got to be on the right time, but I don't think the follow is working correctly. Follow would mean that it follows a Tesla screen. So when you go from uh, this day mode into nighttime and it changes dark, this should follow. But right now, I don't think it does. I am going to actually keep this right now on uh, daytime because I, I want to look at that next. Brightness, you can see. You can change that, and again, this doesn't wrap around. So let's go back up. You can see the brightness changing, or you can go on this one to follow. And on this one, go into display. So you can see how it's following the brightness setting there. That's pretty cool. Plaid mode, I have either showed that or will show that. Right now, I'm going to turn that off. OTA updates. This should be working in the future it's not currently working 
All right, and then you select save and you get your little save okay. And then get back into the different UIs, you click left and that brings you back into where you were. Uh, whether it's UI or again, we're not in gear, so, and uh, this is the day. Here, uh, you can see the different color differences though. You know, gray, blue, purplish. It's kind of neat because um, at least they, they change up and they're not the same. You know, again, this is all individual preference kind of a thing. All right, tire pressure. This is pretty cool. I like watching my tire pressure. No matter what UI you are in, scroll up and you got tire pressure. Now, what's very cool about this, now I haven't been driving, so it's, it's zeroed out for the day, but you've got 0, 0.0. You've got that extra decimal place of accuracy. And um, if you've seen it on your car before, you've never had that extra decimal place of accuracy. It's always just 41, 42, whatever it is, it is. So that's pretty cool. You scroll up one more time and you get the following distance. However, scrolling left and right here does not change the following distance. But what it is doing is changing your autopilot settings here to assertiveness. So the scroll wheel is kind of doing double duty sometimes, but it's also changing whatever it might be changing at that particular moment on your Tesla. So you do have to be aware of that. So scrolling the wheel down just kind of cycles between these different modes. You know, you're back to normal, your following distance and uh, PSI and then you go back up and it you know does the opposite so i really like that that's that's a pretty cool thing all right pulling into our favorite parking spot trying to get as close as we can but how do i know how close i am well check this out new front camera and look at that look at that yeah, all right. That looks pretty close. Ha! Huh. Look at that. Nice. No more guessing, no more scrapes. All right, let's look at some of the basics. First off, it's sharp, all right? The, the graphics on here look really sharp. It's got a really cool look to it. Three different UIs. To get to the different UIs, you move this to the right. Hold it and you could see the different UI choices down there and then when you scroll the wheel you can see we're just going to call them UI 1, 2, and 3. All right let's go back to this one and to select things you push it that way and you select this UI. Now I'm, I'm not going to go through what's on every UI. You'll see it when we're, we're driving going through it but you know we've got mileage here on this one we got temperature I'm, I'm in reverse these you can't get into the UIs really until you're in a gear which includes neutral you can be in neutral but not park here's got horsepower but um, let me show you. you've got your time uh, you know your, your different lights uh, airbag the brake is on right now I'm in my driveway incline means the, the lights are automatic and my normal lights are on mile per hour odometer let's check out a different ui this one's a little bit strange you still have your horsepower you've got mile an hour here you've got speed limit you got another mile an hour here not sure what that's doing i'm in reverse odometer temperature and this is your energy bar you know just like the um the bar up here it's the same thing down here and this tells you your charge what's great about this tells you 80 percent and your mileage 216 miles that is fantastic. Let's check out another UI. All right, uh, this one, you've also got your horsepower, mile an hour, mile an hour. Again, a little redundant. Temperature, you know, you see, see that. And then you get your energy bar here too. So uh, very slick UIs. Uh, let's go through some other differences. All right, when we put it in gear, we get the UIs come up. And, uh, oh, <laughs> it does have plaid mode. I should turn that off just so we can actually drive the car normally. Let me show you something with this horsepower before I forget. Okay, so I put the car in neutral. How do I know this horsepower is 
very gimmicky? Watch. There. That's how I know. It's connected to the accelerator pedal, okay? <laughs> We're not going anywhere. That is not a good indication of horsepower. There are ways that they could pull information off of the CAN bus or whatever and figure out horsepower. I don't know if it would work. I've got a 2018. I, I'm not using the CAN bus, so I don't know if they have access to that kind of information. Uh, really, you could just get power output in, in watts. Um, I can't remember exactly what you get, but you can get enough information where you could actually calculate this. Also, uh, 260 is not accurate either. Uh, that's one of the motors. I, I don't know which, I can't remember which motor has 260 horsepower, if it's the front or the rear, but it, it doesn't matter anyway, because it's just connected to the pedal. So that's, you know, that's not good. And so if you were actually to, to floor this car too, you'd have more than 260 horsepower because dual motor, you got when both motors are kicking in, you know, you got between four, 550 horsepower, depending on your model, acceleration boost, everything else, you don't, wouldn't just have 260 horsepower. So uh, that's a big time gimmick. Um, I'm, I'm not sure really, I don't know, they, they should really do something else there. You can see mile an hour is, uh, you know, it's nice. It, it works well. And you can also see the bar at the bottom. You know, we're green and there it's just kind of whitish. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see it. And on the fly, you can actually change UIs. All right, let's try this UI here. Yeah, this one looks pretty slick. They all look slick, actually. It's just kind of, you know, which one do you like? Also, this is all in dark mode. You can change dark to light. Um, you can, well, I'll show you in the, in the menu what you can change next, but um, you can see it. That looks pretty cool. Front view camera, check it out. That is pretty cool. See this? This is my the lower lip of my car. I've got some uh, vinyl on it, so that's why it's all black like that. But uh, you can move the camera, change it around a little bit. I'll show you where I'm where I have it mounted in the install. This is awesome. And how do we get in here? You just push this down for three seconds. So right now you can just get out of it by clicking to the left. And if you hold it down for three seconds, you're back in. <laughs> that is cool. All right, what does this look like in FSD? I have FSD beta. Now you can see you've got the steering wheel there. There is no other indication aside from that steering wheel on this UI anyway for what FSD is doing. So let's see if I get the nag indicator um, on this UI. I'm not sure if it's working for every UI. And then I know with the other displays, it doesn't work. Uh, it works differently for different cars. Uh, you know, whether you've got uh, a um, uh, earlier model, later model, uh, using the CAN bus or not. Here too, it says stopping for stop sign, but you don't see that here. Okay, here, nag indicator here, but not here. So that is uh, this particular UI. Let's switch to another UI. All right, the nag indicator here, but not here again. I think the later model cars that use the CAN bus, uh, this is not an issue. I believe they get the nag indicator. Uh, you do see FSD here um, is on. All right, uh, let me switch to a different UI. Here it shows the uh, FSD steering wheel, although it's not in blue. Nag indicator there. No nag here. Yeah, uh, that's not good. Uh, to me, it's not awful, but that's it's not good. Whoa. Yeah, nothing. This blind spot warning is actually pretty cool. The Tesla has built-in blind spot warning, okay? So you put your turn signal on, somebody's in your blind spot, they show up red on the display. Now, if that happens with this new screen, guess what? Shows up on the screen too. Left side, right side. That's pretty slick. All right, so let's talk some good, some bad. Good. There's three different UIs and they're all sharp. Dark mode, light mode. 
All right, bad. No nag indicator. I don't know though if this is FSD beta thing, if this is a no CAN bus thing, but my 2018 with FSD beta has issues. Front mounted camera, okay, that's my favorite. That blind spot warning also, hey, that's pretty nice. Horsepower meter, all right. I think you can do better, TMA, come on. Okay, so tell me what you like, didn't like, I'll shoot it over to TMA. Please subscribe, check this out. New wheels and tires. I've got a whole review coming on those. Maybe some slalom action. Check this out, low cost foam gun. Testing that right now. So please like and subscribe, thanks.